Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create what we call a data extension extract in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. You would use a data extract if you want to export or extract data out of a data extension for the purposes of reporting or perhaps um, sending data to a third party system. So the first thing you need to do is have a data extension populated in Marketing Cloud already. I've created a video on how to make a data extension and how to populate it. So check that out if you haven't seen it. Uh, for this video, I'll skip that step because I've already got a data extension that contains data in it. And this is the one we're going to be exporting on a daily basis so that we can provide the marketing team the details of all the loyalty subscribers and the uh, points they've accumulated. When you look at a data extension, you'll notice there's a few key fields here under the properties tab. What we're going to need for the extract that we're gonna set up is this external key field. Uh, and just so you know, you can name this external key whatever you want. The external key is usually referenced for any sort of API integration, or if you're creating an automation based off it, like I'm about to show you. Uh, if you don't name it yourself, it's just gonna be this random uh, GUID that system generated, which works perfectly fine as well. We'll call it loyalty key. Okay, first step you're going to do is navigate into Automation Studio. That's under the Journey Builder icon. Because I know that I'm going to want to run this on a recurring daily basis, instead of creating an extract activity, I'm going to go straight into the automation and just set up a brand new automation. I'm going to be running it on a schedule. So the first thing I'll do is drag the schedule activity over. And now I'm going to drag the data extract activity onto the canvas. If you click on choose, there's nothing in the account right now. So I'm going to create a new extract on the fly. I'll call it loyalty daily report. And of course, this is record level data that's being exported. So everything that's in that data extension is gonna be output in my report. You need to create a file naming pattern so that the FTP knows what to recognize every time the file is generated. I'll name it the same thing as the name of my activity. And I know my marketing team requires it to be in CSV format, so I'm going to go ahead and write CSV. A good tip if you're creating a file that's going to be generated on an hourly, daily, monthly basis is to also include a date stamp. You can use wildcard specifiers, as it says right here, to stamp the file with the date, uh, you can even go down to hours and minutes if you want. This is just gonna make sure that you, the file name generated is unique each day. So who's ever picking up the file, whether that's a person or an automated process, is gonna be able to recognize what day that file was generated. For the extract type, select data extension extract for the extract type. I'll talk about tracking extracts and some of the other options in a, another video. You can leave external key field here empty. This is the external key of the actual extract activity we're building right now. We don't need that. We don't need to reference this particular extract from an API. So the system will automatically populate it. It's the next screen where we're going to input the external key of the data extension. That part can be a little bit confusing. So here's where we need to tell Automation Studio what data extension to export from. And that's why we need to put our data extension key in this field right here. I'll paste that in DE customer key. I want my file to have column headers. So that's going to be out with the file as long as I collect, sorry, as long as I select that field. I don't need any of these other options. Go to next. And now you've finished creating your extract activity. So what happens when you run the schedule is that data extension is going to be exported onto the Marketing Cloud Safe House. 
that's not particularly useful because you need to have that field, sorry, that file ultimately output onto an FTP. So you actually need a second activity in order to make that happen. Now I'm going to drag the file transfer activity onto the canvas. So this is a two-step automation. You only need the two steps, but you do need them both together or it isn't going to work. Similarly, I'm going to create a new transfer activity. I'll call it the same as what I called my data extension extract. And I'll put an FTA to stand for file transfer activity at the end so that it's easy for me to distinguish that that's the type of activity. Because the data extension is currently living on the safe house with that first step, we need to move the file from the safe house onto an FTP location. So here's where it's important that your file name that you input earlier needs to match exactly what you just specified. So exact same file names going here. I know that I have that CSV appended at the end. I'm not concerned with any dates in my data extension, so I don't need to worry about time zone settings. We'll talk about time zone in another video too. I want this output to the Marketing Cloud Enhanced FTP, which is the default FTP that comes with my Marketing Cloud account and this particular business unit. If you have an encryption key and you need to encrypt your customer's data, you click on encrypt file and specify whether that's a PGP or GPG key, which already would already be uploaded into your instance. Uh, and then that's the setting you need to configure. In this case, I'm not encrypting the file, so I'm just gonna leave it unencrypted and click next. Once it's all finished, I'm just going to click on finish and my automation will be ready to go. The final step is to configure the schedule. Like I said, I want this to run on a daily basis. It's going to start today. Um, the start time needs to be in the future, not the past, or it just won't work. So I'll, I'll select 4 p.m. Seems like a good time of day. You can configure the time zone to whichever you want it to be. I'll stick with that. And I want this to run uh, indefinitely, so I'm not going to specify an end date. Click done. Once you hit save, you're going to need to name the actual automation. So right now we've created the activities, but we haven't created the automation itself that houses those activities. Put that into a folder if you wish. Click save. If you want to make sure you receive error notifications, if for some reason this report doesn't run one day, click on activity and enter your email address in the runtime error or skipped run box first. Let's do that for test purposes. Click save. Go back to your workflow. And when you hit activate, your automation will be, run, will be live. Thanks everyone and please subscribe to my channel if you found this helpful.